So the P38 Range Rover, what do we think? Well, I have to say, I still like them. I know it's mine. I'm always biased if it's mine, um, but aren't we all? But, you know, I think as you can see from the road test and your throw test, they are nice vehicles and they are capable. Um, and as long as you're prepared to put up with uh, a few of the issues that you're likely to get with them, um, the rewards outweigh that. You know, just give you a quick tour. So this is by no means dressed up and made tidy for this video. As you can see, actually we're quite untidy, but you know, what an interior. We've got lovely leather, still in pretty good nick. The dashboard layout on these is lovely. Um, I have actually retrofitted Bluetooth to this. Um, so you can actually replace the uh, CD changer in the boot um, with a little Bluetooth module. So when you select CD mode, it's really just Bluetooth. So you can stream music from your phone or digital radio um, and with an addition of a microphone as well, which uh, we have just here. Um, you can do hands-free calls as well. Sound system in this particular model is pretty good. It's got the optional um, is it, uh, Harman Kardon system. So we've got a sub in the boot. Uh, in fact, it's a better sound system than any of my more modern vehicles. Um, and I really like the interior on these. Um, so I think it's something that's lacking in the modern Land Rovers. Um, this particular colour scheme also makes it very light and airy. Uh, loads of room in the back here. You know, if you want a 4x4 that you can carry people in, we've got lots of uh, leg and headroom. Um, I would say one problem I haven't addressed in here, and all of these suffer from it, is the, uh, the sagging headliner. Um, it's not a biggie, you know, they can be solved relatively easily uh, and I must do it on this. Um, and this isn't the only vehicle that suffers uh, with such a thing. Um, but we've got lots of room back here. Um, and likewise, in the boot, we've got the classic split tailgate. And we've got a large boot area. As you can see, another thing that's broken here, the spring for this uh, little device. Um, we've got a spare wheel out under there um but you know they've got big usable boots um in a vehicle that amazingly is i think about a foot shorter than a brand new defender 110 um you know which is, is going some so earlier i was talking about the different engines that you could get in the p38 um so this is uh the last of the rover v8s i say it's a commonly known as a Thor engine, T-H-O-R, and it uses a, a Bosch fuel injection system. Uh, easily identifiable by the intake manifold. In fact, you can see all the runners, um, whereas uh, in past Rover V8s, it had a big sort of oblong box with the uh, engine displacement printed on them. So not too much to see under the bonnet. Um, you can tell it's a more modern style vehicle over past models in the fact that access is uh, far worse. Um, and sort of doing bits on it while moderately easy um, is not like uh, a classic Range Rover or even a Discovery One. Um, that's uh, enough uh, under the bonnet. So what have I done to this vehicle? Well, as I said, uh, I kind of uh, lost the battle with the air suspension. Um, I won't go into the details of it, um, but basically I'm sure it was fixable, but I was having multiple issues of it um, and when you totted up the bill to actually replace the parts just to continue bug tracking what was wrong um, it just wasn't financially sensible to carry on doing that um, so I've put a coil kit on it um, now before I'd put the coil kit on it I did swap to these tyres um, quite impressed with these tyres actually um, these are MT51 uh, Kumo Road Venture mud terrains um, they're sort of that they're definitely a mud terrain, but you know, they're almost like a, an aggressive all-terrain or mild mud terrain. Um, I like the fact that they are quite capable off-road, um, but they're actually still really nice on-road as well. Um, so I think they were a very good purchase. Um, now, because I intended to keep the air suspension, I didn't want to upsize too much. Um, so I've gone for some aftermarket steel rims. I believe they're 16 by 8 um, with a slightly different offset. So they move the wheel ever so slightly outbound from the, the, the factory um, alloy. Um, I think the factory alloys were something like ET33. And so I'm getting mixed up with the, uh, the earlier Land Rover models. Um, and these have got a, a lower ET number. 
um, and the tyres are, are 25570R16. Um, so if you work it out, I think they're about an inch taller than a standard tyre. Um, and that was done for a couple of reasons. One, I hoped it would be fine um, with the air suspension in the lower modes. Uh, and also I've got side steps and mud flaps, which, yeah, you can remove them. Um, but actually I quite like having them on there. Um, and I didn't really want to have to be ripping any of those off. And I definitely didn't want to be trimming bumpers um, or any metal work. Um, so the tyres did go straight on. Um, but as I say, the issue was um, when the air suspension played up and it did go down to the bump stops, um, it did actually damage the tyres. Um, so I don't know if you can see here, but this tyre was actually on the rear originally. And um, we've got bits of lug missing. And there's actually a line that runs all the way around the outside. And that's where the tyre gets jammed up into the rear wheel well, um, pretty good when it's on the bump stops. And also at the front, uh, the tyre is stuffed right up in there. Uh, and it really means you can't use the steering lock properly either, um, which I found to be a complete pain. Uh, and it was one of those reasons for going for the coil kit. Now there is a bit of a story with the coil kit is, as you can see, it looks quite lifted. Um, the coil kit was actually from Bearmac advertised as a 30 millimeter lift kit so it was that just over an inch in one and one eighth inch lift um i think in reality um it's actually lifted the vehicle more like three to four inches or sort of 120 millimeters um bear are actually quite good about it we came to an agreeable compromise um on, on that front um had i known it was going to lift it this much i probably wouldn't have gone for that particular kit um, I think it's a combination of springs that, that have done this. Um, so as with all the P38 kits, uh, coil kits, basically they're just Land Rover springs off of other Land Rover models that people have picked out as a part number and said, yes, we think this will work um, for this sort of weight vehicle. It then uses a combination of Discovery 2 um, spring retainers at the front. And the only best spoke bit is some machined aluminium um, bits at the bottom which actually create a spring seat on the axle uh, because the air springs are held in with a giant clip. Um, so these spring seats clip into that clip and give you a, a base for the spring to actually go on and clamp down as per you would on a, a Defender or a, you know, a classic Range Rover. Um, as it turns out, I'm actually more pleased with the lift kit than I thought I would be. Is I actually quite like the look of it. It's got quite a nice stance now and the tyres suit it. Although as you can see, you could get away with going with a bigger tyre what I think uh, that the mud flaps um, would still be an issue here. Um, but lifting it this high has had several virtues in the fact that it no longer gets beached. So if we just pan around a little bit, um, this hillock here is uh, somewhere where it used to get beached quite easy. And I say long wall based vehicles do. And if you watch my uh, new Defender video, you can actually hear it hit the underside quite, quite vigorously as it goes over there. And um, we've got a slope just here. Now on camera, these things never look as steep as they really are. Um, but we'll just go up here and try and give you an idea. So you can kind of see the elevation we've got now. You know, that we're, what, two vehicles tall, <laughs> high from the top of the Range Rover. Um, now coming up here, we've got some nice deep ruts and tram lines. And you can see, you know, in fact, this, this mark here was the new Defender. Uh, where it failed to get up here and it just sat on its belly and to be fair my Range Rover used to struggle to get up here a bit with the lift kit on absolutely no trouble now it flies up there um, other things uh, I mentioned the overhangs so uh, this being an SVO model um, which has uh, got these slightly different bumpers on uh, they're, they're body coloured um, but they also hang down lower at the back and you can see we've got some damage here um, which is a shame um, but that's where it used to catch so when you went into a hole or coming off a bank or going up a steep ascent um, the bumper would impact the ground quite often um, in fact it was so bad that if you had the tow bar on it was just unpleasant because uh, the tow bar would hit the ground quite violently and you'd feel it throughout the vehicle but with the lift um, again it's not a problem um, the side steps um, I think they would have had to have come off to do some of this off-roading. I have actually bent them slightly, and one of them is a bit loose these days. Um, nothing that can't be fixed by going under there and tightening the bolts again. But again, with the lift, 
they're not really a problem you just don't hit them so i'm not normally an advocate of lifting vehicles um, i like to keep them as low as possible but i think in this case the combination of wheelbase and tire size lifting it has been a really really good choice if you want to go off-road um, i'm sure it wouldn't perform so well in the elk test if you are worried about such things um, but general on road use it handles fine as you can see from the road test video um, at the front we haven't got such a big overhang um, but if uh, if you've read the manual for these it does say that you want to take this uh, bit of lower trim off to go off road um, i've never bothered and even on the air suspension it never did catch although it was very close to uh, to being a problem on some occasions um, but now again with the lift on there it really isn't a problem um, I think it also flexes quite well. Um, the springs, because it was a, a 30 mil kit or intended 30 mil lift kit, the rear spring rate is quite high. Um, that it probably would compress and flex better with a bit of weight in the back. Um, but I think now I've uh, broken the system in a bit. You know, it, it, it actually flexes quite well. Um, so something else I've done as we've lifted it, I've actually fitted some extended shocks uh, at the back. So I think we can, can see in there. So I actually went for, for terra firma plus two inch shocks. Um, now, you, as soon as you fit them, it's painfully obvious that the uh, the rear flexi lines are not long enough. So I've also got some extended brake lines on there. Uh, and uh, the lead for the ABS sensor also needed uh, adjusting. So you get quite a lot more downward travel. Um, for only a plus two inch extra shock, you're definitely getting that, that extra two inches. Um, probably a bit more um, the front I haven't done anything yet I have got extended brake lines to go on and I think I will get the matching shocks as well um, but in terms of capability I don't think it really needs it especially with the traction control it just goes everywhere with ease um, you know so a few simple choice mods uh, again, the tyre size, you know, I kind of say bigger tyres would be nice, but actually these run quite well on the road. Um, it hasn't affected the gearing, it hasn't affected acceleration, um, and it kind of matches the stance. I think if you went too big, you know, you'd find that your, your crawl speed isn't as good, and you're just going to blunt your on-road performance. Um, so the only other thing that's really different on here um, is just the exhaust, which was just a, a, a very simple bit of a... You know removing some of the silences out of it um i say it's not to everybody's tastes not everybody likes a, a loud vehicle but it is certainly an option out there i mean we can just start her up and hear a bit of a rumble start her up also note on the dash that the only sign of having coils on here is we should get a little warning that says eas manual yeah. Now, for a few seconds, um, the switches in the in the centre no longer um, function. That's it. No bongs. No nothing else. Uh, really was quite straightforward kit to fit. Um, but yeah, we do have a bit of a rumbly exhaust. If you like V8s. And you know, let's face it. There's not many car enthusiasts that don't like a good V8. So there we are. I mean, if you're on the fence about P38 or you're wanting a affordable family 4x4 that you can do a bit of everything in, I think these are a really cracking vehicle. Um, I like the Discovery 2s, but if I was given a choice between the two, I'd take the P38 every time. The only thing that Discovery 2 has better is Ace, and that's pretty minor, in my opinion. I know you can get a seven seat version, but the, seven, the, the rear seats, or seats six and seven, are not particularly that practical uh, in the Discovery 2. <coughs> so yeah, go for it. So, what's a P38 like off-road? Well. There is always a debate between autos and manuals, um, as most P38s are autos, um, I think that goes in its favour. Um, I, I must admit, I actually prefer a manual off-road, um, but there is no denying the capability of an automatic. 
Um, but I think one thing I really like about the P38 um, is the sport button on the gear stick actually doubles up and it also says manual. Uh, and that means when you're in low range, um, you can actually manually lock it into a gear. And I don't mean just with the selector, the actual gear selector, you can actually lock it down into different gears. Um, so it won't go any higher than a particular gear. So if I put it in second, it won't go to third, but it would still use first. But in the manual mode, um, I can actually lock it down so that you'll actually pull away in second. Um, this has got lots of benefits off-road um, in the fact that you're not waiting for the gearbox to change or getting unexpected gear changes. Um, really, it's just giving you the same functionality that you'd get perhaps on a more modern gearbox with paddle shifters. Um, only in this case it won't actually override you. If you hit the red line, um, it won't auto shift and it won't automatically shift down for you either. Um, if you go too slow, it, it really is a proper manual mode and it's very accessible off of the H-gate um, gear shifter. Um, I believe also in low range, um, when you're in manual mode, it also locks the torque converter up. Um, so automatics often um, are misunderstood that you don't get any engine braking off-road um, as you would with a manual. However, if the torque converter locks up, you will actually get some engine braking. Um, so that it's not that dissimilar to a manual gearbox. Um, now we're not on anything extreme here, it's just a, a mild off-road test course that we have um, access to. Um, so we'll be in low first uh, and I'll lock it in the manual mode as well. Um, and I'll be honest, on this terrain, with the suspension and tyres I've now got on here, um, this thing feels quite unstoppable. Um, we've got four wheel traction control. Um, you know, it's not quite as good as perhaps actual diff lockers, um, but the traction control works really well. It's at least as good as having a, a limited slip differential. Um, and it will manage to get all four wheels spinning, um, but with a nice added bonus uh, that you don't lose any steering lock as you would with a, uh, a conventional diff locker. Right, so let's see how we go. Um, hopefully we can get some uh, multi footage uh, from inside and some aerial footage as well. Um, so I think first off we'll go down a, a reasonably steep descent and I think we'll see just how well uh, this automatic engine brakes. I won't use the foot pedal at all. We'll just go down. And as you can see, there was absolutely no runaway at all there. Um, the engine just braked lovely. Uh, in fact, that went down there nicer than the uh, new Defender 110 first edition I drove. Um, it might have been partly tyres on that because uh, it was wet out. But I'll be honest, the uh, the HDC that that had and the low gearing didn't seem to hold it back very well. It only decided it wanted to break when it got to the bottom of that slope. Um, this felt a lot more controlled. Um, so we'll go over a few more. This is quite a good little hill uh, for longer base vehicles that they often get beached. Um, now we're lifted, we have no trouble there. Um, there's actually quite a few good little axle twisters in here. The new Defender had uh, rear wheels in the air coming over that bit. Um, but this just feels very, very, very composed. Now, we've got the traction control just gently kicking in there. Now, and I'm going incredibly slowly. Um, you know, you could go a bit quicker over this terrain um, and make the traction control work less. Um, but I'm just really wanting to demonstrate how controllable and how capable the vehicle is. Downsides to a vehicle like this off-road are we've got a lot of bodywork, we've got fairly big overhangs front and rear, um, and the relatively long wheelbase combined with the standard tyre size, which is quite small, gives you a pretty rubbish breakover angle, um, and you know your ground clearance isn't great. Um, suspension lift and bigger tyres address all of these points to some extent, although you'll never avoid the actual physical fact that you've got larger overhangs. Um, than you have on some other vehicles. You know, we've got some bits here that, you know, if you've got a conventional open diffed vehicle, uh, you can quite easily stop a vehicle on this terrain. So something else to say about the P38 off-road is just how well it actually rides. Um, even with the, uh, the lift kit and the fairly stiff spring rate, 
it is a really comfortable vehicle to drive on, on terrain like this. Um, it's the whole package really, the, the gearbox suits the behaviour, um, the traction control just makes it super easy um, and you really do feel like you could go anywhere um, in the vehicle now. The engine also helps on this regard, um, you know the V8 is uh, lovely and smooth and very refined um, and you've got all that low down grunt as well um, so you, you can rev it out when you need to, um, you've got plenty of revs there um, but plenty of low down grunt uh, you know to get the traction control working and uh, to pull you through obstacles. And you can see how well the, the suspension flexes on this terrain. Probably need a bit more speed here. It's quite a good cross axle there. Um, you know, you've got uh, going very light on on the front wheels. Momentum is key. Uh, we'll have a second go. Yeah, easy. For me, I think the P38 really sums up the pinnacle of what the Range Rover Mark model is. Um, I know the, the modern versions are faster and better spec and more luxury orientated, um, but it's it's this one, the last of the live axle Range Rovers, um, that really does it all the best, I think. it It's wonderful on road, it wafts, it's sophisticated, um, but it, you know, it is king of the hill when you get it in the mud. And I think the new ones aren't. I'm, I'm just not impressed with the independent suspension, although it probably suits those more than the new Defender. Um, but yeah, P38s.